Hi, this is Lou Sanderson, and I am providing this free buyer's webinar for you. So let's get started on, on your journey. You're thinking about buying a home, so it's nice to know all the ins and outs about the process. So let's get started. So the process, we're going to go through each of these 14 steps. Um, we're going to go, we're going to talk about the initial buyer's consultation, the pre-approval with your lender, and then let's go shopping, which is the fun part. Number four is placing an offer, escrow. What is an earnest money deposit? The home buy, uh, the home inspection process, buyer's request for repairs, an appraisal, loan contingency, our final walkthrough, loan documents and funding, recording title, and your new keys and celebration. Now you're probably wondering what is all this language that you're talking about. So let's, let's go through each step. In our buyer's consultation, we're gonna basically talk about what kind of home are you looking for? Are you looking, looking for a single family home, a condo, something with a pool, maybe a backyard? You know, there's lots of lots of options. So basically what we can do is we can meet virtually or we can meet in person. And we do follow CDC guidelines for our in-person meetings. But we can do it virtually, which is wonderful. We use Zoom quite often. Now, what we what we want to do is talk about what your needs and your wants are. Um, kind of your desired monthly payment, kind of what the time frame is, and pre-approval. And just to let you know that the buyer's clo uh, closing costs, which is, is your part of the cost associated with purchasing a home, is around 2% of the purchase price. And then the pre-approval. So there's four components when you meet with a lend one of our great lenders. So what they look at is they look at income, stability of income, credit, and assets. Now, through this process, you are going to be providing the lender a copy of your tax returns, your W-2s, pay stubs. Um, they're going to pull your credit, and they're also going to look at how much money you actually have saved up in the bank. So those are the main things that they're going to be looking for. So income is something you have to make, you have to earn at, you know, at your job. Stability, what they're going to look at is you have you worked in the same line of worked in the same line of work or or with some company for the last 2 years at least. And they want to make sure that your income is consistent. So credit, how does that work? So what they look at is your payment history. Are you paying your any any of your debt on time, whether it's student loans, um, credit card debt, maybe you have a car payment, those kinds of things. They look at how much you owe and um, kind of what you're in a in a in coordination with how much you earn. So assets. What kind of assets do you have? Do you have money to say do you have enough money saved up to buy a home? Do you have money in your checking, savings account? Maybe you have a 401k with your company that you could use, um, possibly even stocks and bonds. And then we would have to see if there is a no money down option. Um, there's not really a lot going on right now with that, but you know it's always worth looking at, at options. Final question. So what is your ideal mortgage payment and if you found your dream home so say you know say you can buy between seven and eight hundred thousand but you're wanting to only spend seven hundred can you go to eight hundred if that's your dream home and you can see yourself there for many many years if you're not going to be there for you know at least five seven ten years um, at least five years you know maybe we need to look at something else so there's a lot of different loan products. There's over 300. Um, you could be a conventional loan option. 
Um, maybe you're a veteran and you can go through VA. FHA is another one where you have a low uh, down payment, like three and a half percent down. So you don't actually have to have 20 percent down. So there's a lot of different options. And uh, the lender that we can you know, recommend to you will be able to walk you through all that to see what the best fit is for you. So here's a link that you can take a look at. And what it will do is you can put in how much, how much money are you paying for rent? And if you were going to take the same amount of money that you're paying for rent, what can you buy? Which, you know, is an amazing idea. You know, can I take the money that I'm spending to pay somebody else's mortgage and pay it on my own mortgage? And that way I can build equity within my own home. So let's take a look at the differences between the benefits of buying versus renting. So with renting, there's no tax benefit and your rent may go up every year. So, and there's no investment in or from the property. And because you're paying somebody else for rent, you're not accumulating equity. Plus, they could possibly evict you. You could be there for five years and they, they could say, well, you know what? We want to move back into the house or we want to sell it and then you have to move. You, you really don't have a say. The benefit of buying, you have great tax benefits currently. You have greater stability because you're going to be in the same neighborhood. You're going to get to meet your, you know, get to really know your neighbors. It's really good for the kids to be, you know, within the same school district. Um, you know, it, it makes them feel more secure. It can be a great investment and you can build equity, pride of ownership. I mean, everybody, that's the American dream is, is to own your own home. And then finally, your home, your first home may lead to a better home as you build equity within your home. So once we've done that, Let's go shopping. So once we have determined what your criteria is, I will send you by email a list of homes specific to what your needs are. So we'll go over and talk about the feedback and then we'll go and schedule showings for the selected homes. Now, typically when we are looking for a home um, and we find the home, it's an average of 30 days. And typically, many of our clients love one of the first five homes that, that um, they actually get to see. Because once you go into the home, you actually get the feel of it. So we found the perfect home for you. What we want to do is we're going to pack, put together, prepare, and package our offer. So what we're going to do is we're going to review comparable homes. Um, we're going to prepare offer options and strategies, and we'll go over that. Um, there'll be a cover letter. Basically, it's like a love letter to the seller on why, why they should pick you because they could have more than one offer. Um, and then sellers typically respond within one to three days. And oftentimes, there's multiple counter offer scenario. And so... Um, Currently, because the inventory is so low, there's not a lot of homes for sale. And interest rates, they're under 3%. They're at historic low levels. So just like you, there's more buyers out there going, it's time for me to move into a home. So once we get your offer accepted on this great new home, we're going to go into escrow. So escrow is a neutral third party, and basically their purpose is to accomplish the closing of a real estate transaction, which is what this is, even though it's far more because it's something that, you know, you're going to enjoy for many years. So get ready, buckle up, and let's get started. Let's start with talking about the earnest money deposit. What is this? Basically, this is the money that you are going to um, deposit by wire into escrow. It shows that you are totally in 
on, on moving forward with this. It is a transaction after all. It shows good faith to the seller. Um, and basically once that happens, the home will be, it won't be active anymore. It'll be active under contract while we go through our, our um, disclosure review and um, our contingency periods. So question, can once, okay, so can another buyer submit an offer and get the property? Nope. Once you put the money in, that seals the contract. That's really binding the contract together. But if you take forever to get your money in, you know, you're, you only have three days to get it in. And that's even when we're considering the weekend. So the sooner we get the money in, the sooner we can start with the process. So is my deposit refundable if we decide to walk away? Absolutely. Absolutely. So we're going to have our contingency period, which we're going to talk about in further slides. So how much money should the earnest uh, deposit be? Typically, it's about 3% of the purchase price. So say you're, you're buying a um, $700,000 home. And you take 3% of that, 7 times 3 is 21. So you're looking at 21,000 um, of earnest money that you're going to be putting into escrow. And the seller doesn't touch it. It's, it's held by that neutral third party, which is the escrow company. So once we get to this, um, we're going to be working on getting your loan fully approved. Now, you've already gone through the, the process of getting you approved. So it's really um, about ultimately getting the property approved for the transaction. So there's going to be initial disclosures that you're going to be signing with the lender. Um, the appraisal will be ordered. And then the, once they get the appraisal back and you've signed all your documents, they're going to file, uh, file, submit the file for the, the final underwriting. Home inspection. So basically, what is a home inspection? It is hiring a professional to come in and go through the house and tell you everything about the house. Um, you know, they're going to look at heat, air, foundation, building codes, proper maintenance, termite inspection. That's another thing that um, is important. And any follow-up inspections, whether we need to get a sewer inspection or, you know, pool inspection, whatever, whatever it could be. So this, it, this is typically within 17 days. A lot of times we can do this even within 10 to kind of tighten up that whole part of it. But during this period of time, until we sign off what's called the contingency removal of the inspections, you're still not going to lose your deposit. So how much does a home inspection usually cost? It's average about $500. I mean, if it's a big home, you know, we could be getting a pool inspection or, or whatever. So that's typically um, the cost of the home inspection. And then how much, how long does the home inspection use, usually take? It's usually about two to four hours. And I always recommend that the buyer come at the end. I mean, you could, if you want to be there for two to four hours, it's usually four hours, I would say, or longer, depending upon the size of the home. Um, but really, if you come at the last hour, that way you're not interrupting the home inspector and they can do their job and be very, very thorough. And then you come even the last hour to 30 minutes. They can go over everything and tell you everything about the home that you want to know and that you need to know. And that goes into this question. Are you required to be present at the home inspection? No, you're not required, but you really want to know what you're, what you're buying. You know, has the house been maintained adequately or not? So like I mentioned er, um, earlier, depending upon the house, um, a lot of houses were built and they had a clay piping going to the sewer. So, and that's in the, the front yard. So we typically recommend having a sewer inspection. Um, and those are usually around 175 to 250. 
So, request for repairs. Once we've done our inspections, um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna ask for repairs to be done if, if needed. They're, you know, they may have taken beautiful care of the home and there are really nothing, you know, we don't wanna be nitpicky either. Typically what we ask for are health and safety issues, electrical, plumbing, um, those types of things, you know, things that are, ba you know, that are basic health and safety issues. So, and like I said, normally within 17 days, we can do it within 10 days to get all that out of the way. Appraisal contingency. Now, if you've got all of your documents in to the lender and you're totally approved, which makes you that strongest buyer to the seller, um, that's usually within 17 days. And sometimes we can, you know, depending upon what kind of a loan it is, we can tighten that up even. But really the most important one is the inspection contingencies can be shortened to 10 days. Um, and then finally, the loan contingency. Normally within 21 days, we will remove the contingency for the loan. And that's really the thing that takes the longest. Um, some, some lenders can do them, you know, in a shorter period of time. But once we remove all of our contingencies, that is when you will be unable to cancel your contract without, without losing your deposit. Okay, so just to make that clear, if you remove all these contingencies, and then, you know, at day 28, when we're supposed to close in 30 days, and you go, well, you know, I don't want to buy this house, then you will lose your deposit. But we will try to do everything to keep that from happening because, you know, I'll, we'll be talking constantly throughout this process, you know, to make sure that you're totally um, on board and that you're going to close the deal because we've already agreed to um, all of our contingencies. So what is a request, request for repairs? It's a list of the items that we just discussed earlier. And it also includes the termite inspection too, which typically the seller pays for the termite inspection. So like I said earlier, major repairs, health and safety issues, and issues that are vital to the home. Now you can't go, well, I want you to put on a new garage door um, because that really is not a health and safety issue unless, you know, unless there's a reason that it is. So what should not be included in the request for repairs? Cosmetic issues, like say there's some paint on a wall that's faded. You know, I mean, it's just kind of, it's not really that important to ask for those simple things. Low cost and simple fixes. Um, like you can't go in and say, oh, I don't like the brown cabinets, the, the oak cabinets. I want the white shaker cabinets. You're not going to get it especially in today's market, because there's, like I said earlier, there's way more buyers than there is sellers. So look at this. This is a really good example of a health and safety issue. And then, you know, as opposed to a cosmetic issue. Now these are, you know, these are some requests for repairs. Like, look at this. These are electrical. You know, that you could, you could, Go to turn on the light and get it, you know, electrocuted. So, you know, there's three options to deal with the repairs request. You can have the seller fix or replace the agreed upon items before escrow closes. Now, issues, um, you know, pro issues dealt with before the move in date. The bad thing is, is the seller decides how to carry out the repairs. Um, the second one is seller gives a credit to the buyer for closing costs and that will cover the cost of repairs. So the good thing about that, the buyer has control over how repairs are carried out. And the bad thing about that is estimated costs could be miscalculated or the seller could reduce the purchase price. Um, the good thing about that is you might get the home cheaper and the con is the challenge is to convince the seller to reduce the price. Um, like I said, in today's current market, 
a lot of sellers are saying, you know what? We're selling as is. And then you have to decide if you want to go further to actually purchase the house. Or if you're like, eh, you know, that's not a big deal. I'm going to go ahead and close and we'll move in. Home warranty. This is something that we always get from the seller. And the seller pays for this. So it's very it's it's a usual customary thing in California for the seller to provide the buyer with home warranty for the first year. It covers, oh my gosh, especially with First American, it covers just about everything. Everything you could ask for. Okay, finally, the appraisal. Now, within 17 days of acceptance, um, appraisal will be ordered by the lender. The average cost of the buyer is around $600. And what the appraiser does is they compare similar homes in the neighborhood to calculate the value. And either it comes in at value or above value, and then you, you already have equity built into the home. If it comes in at value, it's generally mo what most homes are appraising for. If it comes in below value, you have a choice. You can bring in more money as a down payment or renegotiate with the seller. And depending upon the market, and currently it is a seller's market because it, there is less than six months of inventory, um, the seller has kind of all the control. They have the house, you want the house, so um, we'll, have to, we'll have those discussions, okay, as we go along. Loan contingency. This is in place for a couple of reasons. So it protects your earnest money deposit to ensure that you have nothing preventing you from being able to close your loan. Full loan approval, um, you know, and that's what we're going to make sure we have prior to releasing this contingency. This is like the final contingency, um, you know, and you've already invested time and money into purchasing this home. And it also protects the seller from getting themselves into a long escrow with a buyer who can't, who can't perform because you can't get the loan if you don't get full loan contingency approval. And like I said, never release this contingency without confirming with the lender that, you know, the loan is going to close. Final walkthrough. So once we've done all this, we've removed all our, all our contingencies, basically three to four days before we close, the buyer verifies the home is in the same condition as when the initial offer was accepted. Home inspector can check on any repairs that the seller has carried out. So once we've done the walkthrough, final walkthrough, you're going to sign your loan documents. So typically what happens is a notary will come out with all the loan documents and you will sign the loan documents. Then the notary will return them to the lender. Well, actually, they will, they will return them to escrow who will prepare them for the lender. And then um, the lender will fund the loan and you will have to bring in the rest of your deposit or the rest of what you are bringing to escrow as far as your down payment. You have to get that in like probably three days prior to funding. So that way it's already in there. That will also be wired into escrow. The lender will fund the loan, which means that they will fund and send over the, the loan amount to escrow. And then the following day or the same day, depending upon what county you're in, if you're in Orange County, um, it could be same day, depending upon when the loan has funded. Um, so it'll be the, the same day or the next day, the, um, oh. let's get to that. It'll be funded. So your loan will fund the, the, um, title will record in your name and then you get the keys. So we made it, you know, the seller is, has zero days if the house is vacant or they have up to three days unless something else has been negotiated between the buyer and the seller. And then you get access to your home. You uh, Prior to that, you'll need to make sure your utilities are set up. Um, that way there's no, oh my gosh, I have no utilities. So you get that set up like 
you know, a few days before um, you move in. And then we have a party. So let's jump up and down, take Instagram photos and Facebook photos and, and move in. And then you start enjoying your new home. So if you have any questions, if you need anything from me, my name is Lou Sanderson, and I look forward to helping you. Thanks so much. Have a great day.